backyard junkie when he's on the run. Four two seven baby suicide door. They ball shit to four on the floor. Down at the strip, he'll settle the score. When it comes to life, we'll be the fastest run around. Hey guys, I'm Franchella and I'm sitting here with Dave Shavari of El Nino, and we are on our second official episode from Soul Shaker Productions Presents, The Soul Session. So welcome. Um, I would like to welcome you to El Paso. You've been here before, I assume? Many times. Okay, I would like to welcome you back to El Paso with a welcome to, or welcome back to El Paso okay. shot. So we'll go ahead and take that. Cheers. I don't and drink, so I'm just bad. I, barely, I never do this, so. See, he did it for me. Right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for sitting down with me. I know no you problem. have a really busy and tight schedule, and you're only here for a temporary like amount of time. Hours. I flew in for a French, you know. Yeah, well, I yeah for Ben. Big Ben. Yes. Um, I'm a sound guy of 25 years. Yeah. May he rest in paradise. And you know, we, he was loved by a lot, uh, a lot of people. He, 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 he listen. He's eternal. He made his mark for sure in okay, the music he's a, industry. He's eternal. Yeah. Everybody knows him and everybody knows of him. Right. Well, I appreciate you taking a small of amount of your day out to, to talk to Glad me. To be and here. Yeah, thank you. So um, you are the, what, founder, drummer, manager, uh, almost all things of El Nino. Some, I guess, yeah. <laughs> well, what would you, what, what would be your, uh, I, on I, your I'm resume? The, I'm, well, I'm the founder of the band. And then when I started the band, I, I ended up producing the first record, the Revolution record, they did our debut. Um, so I became the band's producer, and uh, later, uh, after One Nation on the Ground, around 2007, um, I took over managerial duties for the band. Uh, I had been doing this for a long time prior right. to starting El Nino. I was already probably 15 years deep doing music uh, professionally. I had played with Soulfly before that, right. and mm -hmm. Propane, MOD, Marauder, another band called Gothic Slam, had been many, many bands. So I already had a lot of experience of how to handle a band and everything else. So. For those who may have not heard of El Nino, could you describe them to our viewers? Or describe uh, your it's, style? It's Latin metal, it's aggressive. Some some stuff could be like Sepultura, some stuff mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, we love bands like Korn, bands like Santana. Um, so we, we have done uh, all kinds of styles within the genre. But it's always uh, like world music, you know, like Latin. Uh, so it's a blend of a lot of different styles. Yeah, yeah. We we don't like to with pigeon like hardcore metal yeah, thrown yeah. in. Yeah, we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves. I never. That's one thing about music is that I don't ever want to do. Oh well, I can't do. I can't do a ballad, which we'll talk about this. I'm sure because I, we just did a Selena ballad. What? Yeah, that's we, awesome. We just released it actually today. Uh, Sirius and Radio Jose Mangina at, at a Sirius. Uh, debuted it at uh, Liquid Metal and debuted it today at six o'clock. Hell in yeah! But uh, you think we might hear that? I mean, we'll talk about that yeah, later. It, but it, in it July, you tomorrow. will be back. Think well, we'll hear it in July? Maybe in July. Okay. We're, we're talking about actually doing it, but uh, it's it's a beautiful song, you know. It yeah. was a Beautiful song when she wrote it. Did you like the series? I, I know was, there was a lot of people that were done. like talking shit about no. it, and then there was you a lot of people Bullshit. that were kind of. Fuck them because it was done. It was done great. So you were talking kind of like back in the day about like some of the bands that you were in or whatever. Yeah. So taking it a little bit further, um, when did music at an early, early age kind of come into your life and influence you? And then when, as you got a little bit older, did music become uh, like a uh, like significant part of your future where now you're in these bands and you're- I, mean, I started playing drums late. I started playing drums when I was 16. Oh, okay. And uh, and I was very fortunate, very blessed. I got signed when I was 17. Wow. Uh, so I was only playing drums a year and a half. And, what year uh, would that be, uh, you think? 1985. Okay. I was in a band called Gothic Slam. So you were still a teenager. Yeah, That's I was awesome. Actually, I got signed on my senior year of high school. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I, it's like, again, it was, it's, it's like meant to be, I guess, you know? But um, I was really into music. I, I, start, I started playing bass. I sucked at it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't good at it, so I was like, fuck it. And uh, I was in a band called Gothic Slam back in the day. It's like 80s kind of hair band, uh -huh. trash metal band, okay. like anthrax type of stuff. Uh -huh. And um, I got really into it, got really serious into it. And uh, then I started doing business even back then. 
I started asking friends, how do you get a record deal, you know? And my friend is like, oh, you know, it's guy Mike Sabatini. So turn the record around, you get the address, and you send put attention A <laughs> and R department. So that's what I did. Wow. And I did a fucking demo, sent it out, and I got a record deal three weeks later. Wow. Which was fucking, you know, and it was it, so so much easier back then, I guess, huh? Like now, it, it was between easy. everything that yeah, you can do. Yeah, because there was bands like Exodus and the bands mm -hmm. like Biohazard and all these different bands that were being signed. Yeah. You were born in Peru. In Lima. Uh -huh. So your house. your mom is yeah. Peruvian. Yeah, my mom's Peruvian. I feel like that whole like la my I'm I'm me both Mexican and German, okay. but I feel like my mom is Mexican. And I feel like growing up kind of with like a Latin mother or parentals, uh -huh. they're like a lot more strict and like hardcore, and they'll like beat your ass. You no, know what yeah. I mean? Like my mom if you was, fuck up, <laughs> my mom was a fucking sergeant, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I feel like my that's mom how was it a single is. Mother too. Yeah. So she raised four kids. She yeah. Raised me, my two brothers, and my sister. So my mom didn't fuck around, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, like she, I said, don't... she said, stop it, you stop. Right. Not like now. Right, right, You tell the kid, stop it, and he keeps fucking around, uh -huh. and they, you know, it's like a countdown. You gotta say stop three times before they fucking stop, you know what I mean? So what would be like, if you're, <laughs> as your mom, you know, like, I, I can tell you, like, in Mexican culture, like, we've had, like, the chancla thrown at us. Yeah. Like, what in <laughs> Peru? Listen, the chancla, what do you get thrown the at you? The chancla is fucking international, okay? <laughs> It's a fucking so, Latin, it's a Latin American staple. So you've had chocolate yeah, thrown yeah, at you? Yeah, okay. Listen, my mom didn't fuck around, like I said. It's yeah. whatever she fucking whatever had. Whatever was next closest to her, yeah. she's off. Yeah, yeah. And, and whatever was close to her, that's what I would be wearing. Okay, so, okay. So, you. like, when you were a kid, what kind of music were you listening to then? Dude, you'll bug out. Like, I love bands like Testament. Okay, so uh, you were still listening to, like, harder stuff as a kid? Yeah, yeah. Because I, mean, I grew up in that shit. I grew up a band. Okay, the first record that I, I actually listened to was uh, the first Molly Crew record. Okay. Right? Too Fast for Love, I think yeah, so, yeah. 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 And I listened to that record, and then That's of course- That's very frequently played in it, our house. <laughs> oh, cool. And then I moved, I graduated to, uh, you know, to Shout of the Devil, uh -huh. and then a back twist, the early Twisted Sister, before they had put paint on their okay, face. Okay, okay. Uh, uh -huh. Which was um, Under the Blade, it's the name of that, that song, and I was listening to bands like Accept, Judas Priest, you okay, know. so you were already like yeah, it's meant to you were already listening to stuff that probably was already influencing you into you know your yeah, adulthood metal. or whatever. Yeah. So I'm I was gonna ask too, like as an adult, like what do you listen to now? I listen to Seal. <laughs> it or not. Really, yeah. it's all like I'm more mellow. About, dude, you know I I can't I can't listen to metal, play metal, you know, work out to metal twenty four seven. Yeah, I, I need to. to I, it's a lot of bands I like, you know. Like my daughter was actually, she's like, oh, I hate this song the other day. And I'm like, who is it? So it's Justin Bieber. I said, it's a good fucking song. She's like, well, you, she's like, You're all witch song. She, she's like, don't tell me you like it. And I was like, I think it's a good song. I think it's good. Um, so you had mentioned outside earlier that you've been in the music industry for a really long time. Like if you had to give a number and how many years, I what would that you. be? Started when I was 17, uh -huh. and now I'm 53. Damn, that's that's super awesome. And then I so feel 36, like 36, 36 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I could fucking add. Look at that. Yeah, 36 years. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Yeah. That's almost as and, and, old and, as and, I am. And the funny thing is, like, I know. I can <laughs> I'm be 38. Your dad. There you go. <laughs> I can be I can, your dad. I can be your dad, man. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about how El Nino came to be? Like, how did how did it all get started? Um. I started the band with the original singer for a band called Marauder, Jorge Rosado. And uh, Jorge came in, we started jamming. My old singer from uh, Gothic Slam, his name is Daniel Gomez, he became the guitar player in my first band, which was called El Nino. It, okay. was, it wasn't El Nino at first, it was okay. El Nino. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we brought in uh, this other guy, Christian, who later on became the singer of, of El Nino. Okay. Uh, and uh, we did that band for a little while, for about and a year. And you were still drumming? You were I was drumming, drumming, yeah, yeah. Okay. Everything was cool, you know, we're a four piece. And then we got, uh, then Daniel Gomez stepped out and Mark Rizzo, who is the original El Nino guitar player, stepped in. He's with Soulfly now. Okay. And uh, Mark is like one of the most talented guitar players I've ever seen in my life. He's fucking insane, you know? And um, we, Started writing music towards uh, towards Il Nino at that point. Changed the band uh, about a year later to Il Nino, and the reason why for that is because there was a lot of El Nino movement. There was restaurants called El Nino, a clothing line called El Nino. So the hurricane. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's why I started. We uh -huh. started because um, El Nino. We felt like we 
come to a fucking place to come to tear it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, don't want you don't yeah. want to have to compete yeah. with other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, so yeah. we changed to El Nino. Make a long story very short. I started. I left to, to tour with with Soulfly. I went out and played with Soulfly and Puya and uh, and Haybreed. Yeah, and we went out and cool. we were playing drums. Uh, I was playing drums opening for Iron Maiden when Bruce Dickinson came back, and we did an arena tour with them. Uh, and uh, it was fucking awesome, you know. And uh, I came back from playing with with Soulfly for a little while. I recorded a song with Soulfly the, for the Black Sabbath tribute record cool. for Nativity Nativity mm -hmm. Black, I guess. And um, I decided to uh, to just go hardcore with El Nino, you know, at that point. What would you say is like your most memorable or favorite uh, performance or like show that you've ever done that really sticks My, out in your mind? Two of them, right? Okay. Three of them actually. Okay. Nin 1996, <laughs> I played Dynam Dynamo Open Air Fest with a band called Propane. Okay. And there was 123,000 people there. Holy shit. In Holland. Oh, in Holland. In okay. Holland, yeah. And it was holy shit. Fucking, it was insane. That's a lot of yeah, fucking it people. It was fucking nuts, nuts, nuts. It was beautiful. Great fucking show. Great business day. Uh, then you fast forward to like 2000. Five, and El Nino uh, went to Latin America, and to he to see all these Spanish kids in Chile and in in Mexico, thousands of kids singing. Mm -hmm. I was, it, it, you know, English lyrics. Oh man! In, with the kids who are Spanish, Where they don't even know English. They know what they're fucking singing, mm -hmm. but they're mumbling the words. That was fucking crazy. Yeah, you know, I had goosebumps. Oh, yeah, I was yeah like, for sure. It was nuts. And just from the minute we started the first show, and look it up, the show in Chile, especially in 2005. Okay. From the minute we started, you just saw the entire top and the bottom, 2,300 kids just fucking jumping up and down. And it was, I thought the fucking building was going to collapse. So all those people kind of became one. Yeah, That's it was crazy. insanity, you know? Yeah. And the last show uh we did a show a big german show called whacken open air whacken whacken it's huge <laughs> i mean huge w-a-c-k-e-n whacken that's not what you just get, 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 get <laughs> i was all like no, no. i reverted to like no. you know a 12 yeah, year old no, boy no no no, no. <laughs> I was all so, yeah so we Whoa. played that in uh in 2008 <laughs> 2009. Uh, before you do go on stage, do you have any like rituals or anything that you do you before know what? you hit, Every hit the stage? Every band member has a fucking ritual. Mm -hmm. Not me. Really? No. I fucking just have a couple of shots of espresso. Is, you, is it sweetened? Do you sweeten it? You know, I used to sweeten it with a fuckload of sugar. Now I used to like Splenda and shit like that because, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I went to this really crazy regimen. Um, in the last year and a half, I dropped 80 pounds. Hell yeah. yeah so I've been, nice. I've been going to the gym six fucking days a week. Nice. And uh, I, cut compl I cut all sugar out of my system. You well, know. yeah, that, those shots of espresso will make you want to do a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, with the You're sugger. like ready yeah, to like, yeah, yeah. pump iron yeah, and shit. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, I, I, again, I did, it, I did it for my family. And it's crazy before the coronavirus thing hit, you know? It was like six months, eight months before that. I. Um, I was with my daughter. I took her to the daddy-daughter dance. And I had this weird situation where she was running around and I kept looking at her and I was like, who the fuck's gonna take care of my kid better than me? Right. Nobody. I'm fucking responsible for that kid. And I was like, why the fuck am I fucking 80 pounds overweight? Like, wh why am I doing that to myself? Why am I doing that to my kid? Like, my kid needs me. And That's that day I went home and I sat down with my wife and I was like, listen, starting tomorrow, I'm hitting the gym five, six days a week. I'm hiring a trainer. I don't want to see any sugar in the fucking house. Like, you know, so no carbs, no sugar. And, uh, and that's how I was able to do it, thank God. So you were mentioning earlier that you guys are about to go on tour. Yes. When, do you, when does the tour start? July, we are actually July 8th. We are playing uh, in uh, Corpus Christi. Okay. Uh, July 9th. We are playing in uh, Austin, Texas. July 10th, we are here at the Rock House. Yes. In El Paso. Get your fucking tickets. Yes. Don't fuck up because they're going to be... Honestly, we're almost more than 50%. Fuck yeah. You know. So for those of you who don't know, um, the Rock House is hosting not just El Nino, but this is actual, actually a festival. So it is on Saturday, Saturday July 10th. 
um, here at the Rock House. The tickets are on sale now. I wanted to ask you something too, actually. Um, the, will Can there I see be... the bands that are playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have, uh, I have uh, the uh, list uh, here uh, too. Uh, our bros, upon a burning body, mm -hmm. who's a, a co-headline show. Right. Uh, our, our buddies in King A10. Yep. I fucking love them. I actually called them and asked them to be on the tour on the four dates with us because I love them so much. Um, a band called Insight with Richie Cavalera, who actually went on tour with us. Uh, a band called Evolution Empire that I manage and a band called Born in Blood that I also manage. Cool, yeah. nice. Yeah. So there's a total of eight bands um, during this festival. Um, we're, gonna, we're all gonna play on stage at the same time. And, 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 <laughs> it's gonna sound like what's happening yeah, outside right now. It's gonna sound like, we're all gonna be like, one, two, three, four, we're all gonna play at the same time. We're gonna knock it the fuck out and be done. Like, yeah, peace. Right? Thank you for your loot, we're out. So we have regular tickets on sale. There's also a limited amount of VIP tickets. VIP tickets where you get to like, you know, chill with the band and we're going to have a, a- Like a meet and greet. Like a you meet can and take greet. pictures we're and stuff like that. We're going to have a guacamole fucking contest. Fuck yeah. Which a are, chancla throwing uh, contest. Yeah, chancla throwing contest. <laughs> but we're, seriously, we're actually going to have a guacamole contest. No, you were being serious I'm about it? I'm dead serious. Fuck. With, with your own. Mateo, uh, you know, Mateo. Uh-huh, okay. from the Rock House. Yeah, from the Rock House, the owner here. He's, uh, he da he dared my singer, uh, Marcos Leal from El Nino, that he can kill his fucking guacamole. And I was like, okay, this is gonna get serious because I don't know if Matt has ever tasted my singer's guacamole. His shit is like fucking top-notch, five-star shit. So I was talking shit with Matt on the phone. We we're talking about other business and I was like, hey man, you know, maybe we should get some, he's like, I'm gonna have a great barbecue. I said, let's get some guacamole. And he's like, who's gonna make it? I'll make it. I said, nah, I said, my singer's gonna make it. He's like, fuck that. He goes, I'll make it. I said, this, why don't you guys have a guac off, man? A guac off. <laughs> I know, it sounds like a jerk off. But, and he said, Matt said the same thing, man. It's like- It's like a circle jerk, so yeah, what? He goes, the guac off doesn't sound right. I'm like, no, come on, motherfucker. I go, get you out of the gutter. So they're gonna have a guac off, a not guac a jerk off. off. <laughs> but I think that, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be pretty fucking cool. It's, it's Marcos Leal versus fucking Matt. And we'll see. <laughs> and we'll see who's got it. Okay, look, I'm I'm in it you're now. Judge, I'm a, a judge. I'm a judge. Okay. My wife's you a judge, that. too. My wife's okay, a judge. Cool. You're a judge. Okay. We still got to pick maybe, maybe one of the guys on front of Burning Body would like to be a judge. Okay. That would be fucking awesome. Well, well, how many judges are on the panel? Four. Four or five. Okay. I think five is a good number. Four or five, and then we'll see. Well, you have to do five because there's... I don't even want to... I don't want to do it. You can't do four because what if it's a split? You can't do Listen, it. You have to have five. five. But I don't even want to fucking do it because I'm going to get shit from either one of them. <laughs> if I fucking choose Marcos, He's gonna be like, you have my back, and then Matt's I'll gonna be like. I'll get shit from Matt too if I don't pick Matt. You know what? We have to do it blindfolded. We're, we, we, are. we don't know who's is who's, we don't, right? We don't. Okay. We don't. All right. We don't. So we'll see what happens. Is there any last words you would like to say? I Anything just want to say at thank all? Whoever, wh whoever has supported us, uh, supported me throughout everything and throughout just the last thirty years of my career. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. you in anything you've done, you've done for me, and doesn't go unnoticed. And whoever didn't have my back, thank you anyway, you know, because you gave me fuel to not fuck up. Um, thank you so much thank for you. being here with me today. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Thank it you. was a pleasure to meet thank you. you. Um, just a quick little short special thanks for everybody that has been involved in the production of this video. Um, and also in bringing not just El Nino, but all the bands to, to, to come play at, you know, at, on July 10th at the Rock House. Um, special thanks, of course, to Dave, the band that's going to be coming in, uh, Matt and everybody here at the Rock House. Um, of course, our the guy that's holding the camera right now and doing our sound is Mr. Chris Bond with Disintegrator Films. Thank you very much. I appreciate your, your help always. Um, our editor, Gino Ibarra, thank you very much. Um, of course, be sure to come and visit us at our shops. You know, my shop is Dreadful Things. We also have um, Jake's shop is uh, pumping ink tattoos and then we have vintage barber shop so come and visit us and um, thank you once again for joining us this can, is our can I say one thing absolutely I want to dedicate this to Ben Allen Vallejo my sound guy of 25 years uh, this is why I'm here I came here because I wanted to pay my respects uh, we had a funeral service today and uh, I'll see you again man and I, I love I love Ben Allen Vallejo was so this, I guess we can just dedicate this whole, Ben, I'll this whole up, second episode to Ben. So this one's for you, Ben. Um, thank you for joining us on our second episode of the Soul Sessions. 
We are Soul Shaker Productions, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks much. Got you July 10th. Hey guys, I'm Franchella, and I'm sitting here with Dave Shafari. Shafari. Son of a bitch. Okay, let's start again. Dave Shafari. I'm Franchella, and welcome to our second episode of The Soul Shaker Presents The Soul Sessions. Oh, you know what? Let me start that over because okay. I said Soul Shaker Presents mm. instead of Soul Shaker Productions Presents. Okay, it's because it's fucking hot in here. <laughs> it is. I'm like sweating. I already told him all his equipment has all my sweat all over it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're the fan guy? Yeah. You can feed us grapes too. Okay.